Okay, so here is a quick revision to some basic carbohydrate biochemistry. So you should know that carbohydrates, they are molecules that come with hydroxyl groups as their functional groups. And there are two forms of hydroxyl groups. It could be either aldehyde group if they are found at the termini or at the ends of the molecule, or it would be ketone group if they are found in the middle of the molecule. So showing in this picture, you have got a hexose molecule because it comes with six carbon. But aside from hexoses, you do have five carbon pentoses, four carbon tetraoses, or the three carbon trioses. So all these are the common forms of sugars. So some examples of hexoses would be glucose, mannose, and galactose. While the examples of pentoses would be ribose, xylose, and arabinose. One important property of carbohydrates is that they can exist either as an open chain or as a ring structure. For example, both glucose and fructose are identical in terms of their chemical equations, which is C6H12O6. But for glucose, it can exist as a pyranose ring, which is a six-membered ring structure. While for fructose, it can form either as a furanose, which is a five-membered ring structure, or a pyranose ring. So the formation of this ring structure is dependent on the interaction between the hydroxyl functional group with the aldehyde or the ketone group. However, sometimes the hydroxyl groups from the sugar can also interact with an alcohol group to form an O-glycosidic bond or to interact with an amine group to form an N-glycosidic bond. So when this happens, an adduct is said to be formed. So what is an adduct? An adduct is basically a product of a direct addition of two or more distinct molecules resulting in a single reaction product that will contain all atoms of all components. But this resultant product is considered as another distinct molecular species. For example, when an alcohol group, in this case, which is a methanol, interacts with the hydroxyl group from the sugar, it forms an O-glycosidic bond. So an O-glycosidic bond is a chemical bond in between the carbon atom and the oxygen atom. On the other hand, when an amine group interacts with the OH group, it forms an N-glycosidic bond, which is a chemical bond in between the carbon atom and the nitrogen atom. So in both cases, an adduct is said to be formed. Okay, you should know that the simplest form of sugars are monosaccharides, which contain only one sugar molecule. However, two sugar molecules can react to one another to form a dimer or a disaccharide. So basically, a disaccharide is an example of adduct, and they are joined by the old glycosidic bond. So examples of disaccharides will be sucrose, which is formed by the joining together of a glucose and a fructose. Okay, here comes the most important part. When sugars react together, there can be a whole variety of chemical bonds. As you can see from this picture, there are five hydroxyl groups in the hexose molecule. And the hydroxyl group of common number one can interact with carbon number one, carbon number two, three, four, and six of another monosaccharide to form an O glycoxidic bond. Which means if you have two identical sugars, they can form a whole range of dimers, not just one type of sugar. And this is the key thing about carbohydrates, that the presence of these multiple hydroxyl groups provide a great structural possibility and a great structural diversity. Proteins, on the other hand, only use one bond type to form a polymer. In this diagram, we have one sugar forming a glycosidic bond in between carbon number one and carbon number six of another sugar molecule. So this is the one six glycosidic bond, while at the bottom, you have the one four glycosidic bond, which is in between carbon number one of one sugar and carbon number four of another sugar. 
So the 1,4-glycoxidic bond is predominantly found in the backbone of carbohydrates, while the 1,6 bond, they are found in the side chain of carbohydrates polymer. When a disaccharide grows any further, it will now become a polysaccharide, which are made by the polymerization of many monosaccharides. And they often serve as storage molecules, such as starch that is found in plants and glycogen that is found in animals. So both these structures are huge molecules storing a great amount of energy in their glycosidic bonds. On the other hand, polysaccharides could form complex structures when they are associated with the membrane plasma. So for example, you could have a great variety of branching using the 1,6 bond and a lot more combinations as we have uh, learned from the previous slide. You could have modifications by other chemical groups such as the addition of the amine group, proteins or the addition of other type of sugars and so on. So this variety simply means that polysaccharides are information rich and these characteristics is used in cell recognition events.